Welcome back, everybody. Hope you're enjoying this series on Grey Ghost Resurrection. A lot of interesting stuff we're running into. So now we're ready to put the top end back together. Um, we've got our top end rebuilt. There's another video for that. <clears throat> and I uh, cleaned it up and painted it. I um, actually painted it with this really inexpensive duplicolor at AutoZone. I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out because you can never tell what these metallics look like, but it actually turned out really good. I'm really digging the the color and everything. You know, it really does look like, uh, looks like real aluminum. It doesn't look like paint at all. So I painted that and I painted the cylinders the same color. Um, we got these back from our machine shop. I didn't already mention that. They did a bang up job. $35 a hole at a local machine shop that's been running for years. Uh, super good people out there at uh, Gabriel's in Athens, Georgia. Uh, they did a fine job there with got some good cross hatching in there. I already mic'd them and uh, everything is perfectly in spec. Exactly what I, what I wanted. Uh, chamfered the uh, ports in there. Got another video on all that stuff. But now it's time to stop messing around and put all this back together. Um, gaskets here. So this is the this is the uh, the bottom gasket that goes between the the cylinders and the case. And the weird thing about this is, so you know, these things there's holes here. If you look in the spec, that'll tell you how thick they are. And so, you know, five holes is, is, a, is a half a millimeter right here. Well, this one has 10 holes. So this was a real big puzzle that for me and, and my Sea-Doo friends on Facebook, um, I, and what we determined was uh, that can't be right. There's no such thing as a 10 hole. And I mic'd it myself, and it's, it's a half a millimeter, so which means it's actually a five hole and the guy on the stamping machine must have fell asleep at the wheel and popped it two times. <clears throat> but it, it is, it is uh, the five hole, which is pretty, you know, run of the mill medium stuff that you put on here. But this only goes on one way. There's no sealant that goes on that. <clears throat> uh, we've got our pistons, of course. I've already put the rings uh, on the piston. Notice these have arrows on them. Those always point to the exhaust. As far as the rings, sometimes there's questions about these, and um, there's uh, there's the the black rings, and then there's the rings that's got the like the um, chrome or shiny stainless steel coating or whatever it is on the top, and uh, those need to go on the top. So the 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 shiny ones need to go on the top, and the dark ones on the bottom. On this particular ski or this particular engine, <clears throat> I don't think the orientation upside down or not matters, but um, just as a general rule, you can't see it in the camera, but the, these rings do have numbers on the top of them, and so you always want the numbers facing up when in doubt, so all these numbers are facing up. I also, these pistons have little uh, indexing pins here um, that you can see. I'm trying to turn this with my hand, you can see it down in there, right above that blue mark. I added that blue mark so that I'm not having to peer into that hole and try to find it. Um, I can see it real easily that way. But anyway, both both rings are on. Everything's good there. And we've got our, got our new wrist pins. We've got our caged bearings. Um, you don't have to use cage bearings. You can use um, the regular bearings, which are kind of tricky to put in. And if you drop a needle down in down in your case, you know you're going to be regretting that. Of course, you put like towels and stuff like that in there to prevent that from happening. But um, truthfully, the you know the OEM side by side needles is is better than these. These are just super easy to install because they go right into your wrist pins like that. Easy to do. You can't mess it up. Um, but if you notice, there's gaps right in between those. You know where they have to cage in. Um, on without this, the OEM needles. There's more needles. So more needles means more surface area. So they're stronger and they wear better. But I've never 
I haven't heard anybody complain about problems with their caged bearings giving out on them when they wish they had gone, you know, with the non cage bearings. So that's pretty much what everybody's using. So I'm going to go with that. We've got our, our little, uh, C clips that go on the ends right in there. Um, we are going to put two of those in initially just to have them in. It's easier to do it now than it is once we put them on there. And what else do we have here? We've got all of our bolts, obviously. These are all cleaned up. These may not look clean. These are not stainless steel uh, because stainless steel is actually not as strong as these. So uh, those don't have to look pretty, but they are cleaned up, trust me. Um, and then the uh, the other bolts, these, which are stainless steel, these are all nice and cleaned up. We've got our torque wrench here, of course. Uh, I'm going to hit the edges with a razor blade to make sure I've cleaned all the little, any little pieces like that on the cylinder. Um, I have not cleaned this since I got it back from the shop. I just cleaned the outside real good and painted it and oiled the cylinders to keep them from rusting uh, before I had a chance to do this. But I am going to take some, uh, I want to clean them out first just with some rags and things like that. And then I'm going to take transmission oil and I'm going to wipe the inside of those down until it comes out clean. So I'm going to get that's kind of standard procedure with that kind of stuff. So get those nice and clean. And then I'm going to put a little layer of two stroke oil on it, which I've got here. Um, we're going to oil up the rings. Uh, we're going to oil up all the pieces that we need to do. And then we're going to put the pistons on those connecting rods. And then we're going to put the head gasket on. put all the stuff together, drop that cylinder uh, cylinder set right on top of the pistons. And the hard part about this whole thing, everything's going to be really easy. The tricky part is squeezing these piston rings in so that they go in, you know, to the bottom of the cylinders because the cylinders push down over the springs. That's going to be the tricky part. But uh, enough talking about that, so uh, let's uh, get to it. All right, so we've got our initial lock rings in. Kind of have to wrestle those in with a pair of needle nose pliers or something. It's very clear you need to make it easy on yourself when you, you go to put the, the other ones in. Here, let me move this over here where I'm not in the camera. I'm just lubing up these needle bearings. Two-stroke oil. I'm going to slide it in here like this. And we're going to take our wrist pin. I'm going to put a little two-stroke oil on that too. And then we are just going to take the piston slide it through here. Just kind of have to feel your way through it, but it'll slide through. Push it all the way through till it makes contact with the lock ring on the other side. Then we'll do the same thing. On this one, more oil is better than not enough oil, so be liberal with the oil. clips on the inside. And 
again. It's kind of a feel for it. You kind of have to move it around until you feel it go in place. And then it should slide through like that. <clears throat> and there you go. So now we need to put the clips in on the outside. Going to start with this side and put these clips in here. Be sure to put the clips in the little notch. And really the only reason you do that is so you can take it out later or the next guy can um so this is going to be a barrel of monkeys here i can tell already twisted on me that wasn't too bad Just want to be sure it's seated in there good. Lord knows I've had a lot of C-clips that I thought were seated and weren't. Now we'll do the other side. Okay, now... Lowered the camera down where you can see. So what we need to do is um, I've got everything cleaned up. I cleaned these out really good with transmission fluid. And then I wiped them spick and span, blew them out. Actually, I blew them out first, then put transmission fluid in it, cleaned all that out, and then put two-stroke oil on that. well as the pistons have two stroke oil all the way around them so that everything's lubed up and good to go so what we're going to do is we need to put our gasket on don't want to forget that as you're about to see it's kind of a pain in the neck to get everything else on there this only goes on one way because there's some alignment pins here that have to go in these valves like that. And then what I'm going to do, and this is sort of where everybody's kind of got their own thing here, is if you're pretty good at it and you've done it a bunch of times, you can just set that uh, cylinders right on top of it. Um, I'm not that good, so I'm going to put some training wheels on here for me, which I'm just going to screw these rods in here studs just temporarily just to get me something to keep the the cylinders from falling over and dropping on the floor because that would be my luck okay and then I'm gonna I'm gonna position this so that one of these is taller than the other one and then we're gonna take the head going to drop it down on here we're going to take this tallest piston and we're going to kind of index it in there this other one's already trying to come up and then the the trick is what you have to do underneath here is you know you have to line up your piston rings with those indexers and like I said before, I did that, I marked these so that I could see them. And now I'm getting dividends from that. I can barely see it. The light's not very good down here. Um, but this is not necessarily the easiest part, but if you squeeze them together, they'll go up in there. And the, the, what's going on is the bottom of this cylinder, it's got a little kind of uh, flared or beveled edge. So they will go in. You just have to be patient and kind of work with them and do one at a time. Get 
get this guy going first too. Maybe that'll help. Any second here, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get my my shop light because this is hard to see. All right, that one's on. Okay, both the top ones are in. We're almost there. Maybe I can get away from doing this without actually having to go get my light. That one's almost in. Don't want to get anything in a bind and break it either. But that one's almost in. I think these are pretty well seated up in here. Double checking. So I think I can just kind of grab it now and push it down. There we go. Just like that. Uh-oh. I have that the right way? Let's see. Intake and exhaust are both on one side. My pins are lined up there. There we go. Okay. Scared me for a second. All right. And then as far as these studs, believe it or not, these don't need any kind of Loctite or sealant. Some people put Loctite on them, but it's really kind of unnecessary. Um, so all I'm gonna do is just snug them down. Some people even just snug them down hand tight. I'm gonna get them a little tighter than that. Okay, now those are in there snug. Now what I'm looking for is, obviously we need to have our head gasket. More on this in just a second. First, don't wanna forget these. We've got our little O-rings that have to go down on these studs. People have different thoughts about what those are for. Some think they're to seal out seawater, and I've heard that from some very experienced people that had built hundreds of these engines. But the manual says they are anti-rattle. So this will only go on one way, like this, and it lays flat, like that. And then this goes right on top of it, just like that.
grease, Loctite. I'm not going to make you watch all of these kind of tedious. Then Loctite on the stud threads. All right, sorry about that, folks. Little uh, shaky video. My phone lost power, so I didn't realize that when it was happening. But all you missed is torquing them down. Um, that's a pretty easy thing here. This is in the manual. This is the torquing sequence, um, just like you'd expect. Crisscross applesauce. Um, two rounds, 15 newton meters for the first round and then 34 newton meters to finish it all off and you saw what i did with where to put the loctite and the grease that's the important part so everything's put together and sealed up um got these plugs in the top right now and without doing any technical tests i can just tell by rotating it um it's got good compression it's almost so tight i can't even really rotate it by hand at least not very fast um you can hear it leaking through just a little bit um on the inside so that's that's what we expect uh the other thing real important here is i've already done this i just want to show you in case i forgot it in one of the other videos but um these uh rave valves the guillotines that fit in the top here since we've bored our pistons out, th this edge can actually catch, can protrude inside of the cylinder too far and catch the rings. And when that happens, you can imagine it just breaks rings like that. The uh, manual says that um, if you only go 0.25 over, you don't have to shave back the valves. If you go over 0.25, then you need to shave back the valves so that they don't they don't hit. Um, fortunately, I didn't have to do that, but to double check, and like I said, I've already did this as soon as I got the cylinders back from the machine shop, but put the valves in. Um, should really tighten them all the way down. You want them down in there as far as you can go. On the 95s, this plunge setting goes all the way in. You want to make sure it's seated all the way down. What I actually did is I took the caps off <clears throat> and I pushed the actual stems down as far as they could possibly go in there. Um, and then you rotate. I'm going to pull these out. Can't rotate it with the compression going on there. And then you rotate it and you just want to make sure it doesn't catch and hit those guillotine edges. So it does not. If it did... One way you can file those down, the best way that I saw anyway, I've never done it, is you take a piece of fairly coarse sandpaper, different degrees of sandpaper, and you take a, your old piston or a old piston, and you just do it like this, and you just keep working at it until you bring it back by whatever, a couple of a millimeter or half a millimeter, whatever it takes. We didn't have to do that, so... Um, that is going to finish our top end rebuild, and that actually completes the whole core um, of the whole engine. So all we have to do now is put things like the mag cover on, got to put the little flywheel cup on, uh, just a couple of other things, oil injection pump, and check all that out. But we'll do all that later. So this is complete. 
right now. I'm pretty happy with the way that all of that turned out. No problem. So thanks for watching on this. And uh, <clears throat> as always, leave comments, uh, questions, and uh, even a like if you feel like it. And we'll catch you on the next episode.